Well, meanwhile, representatives from African governments have resolved that states must end armed conflicts to stop the thousands of deaths that result from migrations. Over 30 million people are estimated to be displaced in Africa. CGTN's Isabel Nakiria now reports from Kampala, where a meeting on migration has just concluded. Millions of people on the African continent have been forced from their homes, mainly due to political instabilities. And such conflicts have resulted to farming because people cannot farm. There are concerns that more people are forced to move from the Western African states of Nigeria to countries like Libya and Egypt to the Far East countries of South Sudan and Somalia. Delegates attending three days of a meeting on finding solutions to migration say, unless states resolve these disagreements, people will continue to seek asylum elsewhere. There's a very troubling side to this too. Too many people are dying along the migratory route. Last year we recorded more than 5,000 deaths in the Mediterranean alone. That's how many we know who died. We don't know how many other bodies are in those dark, deep waters, or how many others died in the Sahara Desert whose bodies will never be recovered. But even if it stays at 5,000, it's too many. We cannot afford this anymore. Some migrants have crossed borders in search for better opportunities. There are regular reports of migrants being trafficked as sex slaves or going through long hours of hard labor. The migration meeting in Kampala agreed to work to improve the conditions of the migrants. Uh, migrants, despite their uh, migratory status, need to be um, treated uh, with dignity and respect, and they need to have all the access to the social services uh, that um, people in, in these countries that migrants go to have, you know, in these uh, destination countries. They need to have access to health, to adequate health, to education, to higher education. Those that came with a certain level of education, a certain level of uh, work experience, um, should not have to uh, be turned back. The meeting also urged African states to view migration as an economic resource. Migrants who are given jobs can often provide valuable skills resources in the countries they live in. The resolutions of this meeting will be submitted to the African Union for consideration. Member states hope that their voices on the care and safety of migrants will be heard and taken seriously. Isabel Nakiria, CGTN in Kampala. Well, for more on this, I'm now joined live from Kampala by Isabel Nakiria, who's standing by for us. Uh, Isabel, of course, we know that Uganda has been playing host to thousands of refugees uh, particularly from South Sudan. But what portion or what proportion rather of these are in fact children and what's being done to assist them? All right, Lindy, our uh, aid bodies are having to deal with millions. In Uganda, about 1.2 million refugees, most of them South Sudanese, have crossed into the country. And many of these are children and women. Unfortunately, most of them, most of the children ha are uh, unaccompanied, and uh, many of them arrive tired, exhausted, and very traumatically affected. And the first thing that uh, aid bodies and humanitarian organizations do when these children arrive is to first ascertain their psychological status because of the, tra the traumatic experiences they go through. They're also taken through some medical tests in case of any communicable diseases, and they are treated in order to have the children have a decent health. And probably after that, then the children are enrolled into schools. And as you say, the unaccompanied minors arrive feeling rather vulnerable. As you say, they're traumatized and they're exhausted. Um, further on for, from the programs that you've mentioned, are there any efforts made to reunite these children with their families or relatives? I must say it's a very challenging thing for, for aid bodies to, to kind of trace these children's uh, families because many of these children, as I already said, are already trauma tra traumatically affected and also they, many of them do not even know where they came from, the names of the places they came from, neither do they know their parents. So the children arrive and the first thing that they do is probably bond them with, 
with a guardian and through the bonding process the child the guardian is able to to, to get some information information from the children and in partnership with the International Rescue Committee, more information is got before a documentation and registration process is, is begun. And that is after the, re the registration, then the child can, be, they can begin a reunification process with the family because by then probably they should have got some information from these children to, to get back to their, fam to their families. All right, we'll leave it there. Thanks very much, Isabel Nakiria. Live for us there in Kampala on the plight of unaccompanied child refugees in Uganda.